It's been exactly 40 years since the entity known as Ra first contacted the group at LNL Research back in 1981. And as this date came near, I started thinking about doing something special for this day to honor not only the message that was transmitted by the entity known as Ra, but also to the people of NLL Research, specifically Don Elkins, Carla Rueckert, and Jim McCarthy, because thanks to them, we have this amazing material that I've been covering in my channel for almost a year already, and it'll probably go along for the next couple of years or even beyond as I keep going through the channeling that they had in NLL Research and they continue to have, and it's all related to the law of one. But with this, I wanted to make something specific, something that kind of makes sense within the context of what is it? And this is probably a question that if you follow this material and if you talked about it with friends, family, coworkers, or anybody else, they would ask you, what is the law of one? What does that mean? Is it a religion? <laughs> I get asked this a lot. Uh, is it a sect? Is it a set of parameters that you live your life by? That's kind of close. So I wanted to get to that question first. And with that, we need context. We always need context to know uh, what it is that something means. Of course, I have a couple of slides to help me out go through this because I wrote down a couple of things as I had this idea in mind and I think that would make it a lot better. So uh, I'm gonna read my own words that I had when I was thinking about what this law of one means for us, especially now. If you've been following my videos explained session by session, uh, lately I've been trying to get conclusions of everything that I read because I like to put context at the end in a practical way for us to uh, expand our consciousness a little bit and have an idea of what this actually means. So let me go to the first slide where I say that when I talk about the fabric of reality, I don't mean it in the scientific way, but in what it means to be a conscious being. And consciousness is actually the key word here because consciousness is the big question that we have as a modern society. Consciousness is something that still baffles us as, say, uh, conventional thinkers and scientific people because we have put that out to the side or to the corner and said, we don't know what that is. It's just something emergent from, uh, from the brain and it's, um, we can't explain it. It's just there. <laughs> so everything now we know that is consciousness everything is conscious in the sense that it is evolving that it has a connection with us and this is all with you know with quantum physics and quantum entanglement and uh, the uncertain principle and the observer effect and so on so we know that everything is consciousness and we have to start there once we know that everything is conscious then how do we relate to that consciousness and who are we that's the biggest question, too, that we always ask. And with the law of one, we start answering these questions. We start digging into some of the answers. Now, of course, I'll probably repeat this different ways in the video, but uh, the law of one or the raw material is not the one way to see things. It's just another way. And it's just one of the many materials that are out there that can help understand this. Uh, to me, and I'll talk about this at the end of the video, it has helped a lot to discern this reality in the way I used to see it and all the confusion that I had and now to see it in a better picture. But consciousness really is the key word here because it makes us understand who we truly are. We can get into Buddhism here because consciousness is at the core of that philosophy, but we're not going to do that here. So we're going to move to the next part of uh, what I talk about is it's impossible to talk about who we are without a background and history is essential for these because as humans, our information comes from our ancestors. Our place in the cosmos is spiritual. And this is something that the law of one explains. This is something that is at the center of the message of the law of one. We are spiritual beings and treating this physical reality as the only thing that exists is missing 
not half of us because it's not even half of who we are it's missing everything that we are it's missing the purpose it's missing the reason why we're here it's almost like the soldier that is out there uh doing their mission uh, actually just walking and not doing anything they forgot where they come from they forgot what was their purpose their mission and their communication with their high command and so on so how useful can they be so in the same way we may be warriors of light who are lost in this physical reality because we have lost that connection and that contact with the spiritual and this is something that no matter how you seek it no matter how you follow it you have to uh, you have to make that reconnection if you have it already I'm speaking from every time I speak about this I try to speak from who I used to be and I was a net zero at spiritual uh, spiritual gaming <laughs> I have no levels I had no levels at all when it came to spiritual understanding so that to me is very important to have in mind that we are spiritual uh, beings and now pair that with consciousness and now you're beginning to see the picture so we'll go to the next bar that I have and I say our, our purpose in life is something we seek until death and for all of this uh, we have created the core of thinking philosophy philosophy describes the works of reality and in this way the law of one is to me philosophy of life you would think that we have figured out things by now with our uh, phenomenal science with the way we uh, we describe this reality the truth is that science has been transformed into something more of a religious system rather than what its beginning were actually um, intended to be which was a philosophy a way to describe reality the physical world science was a way to uh, explain the physical the things that were divisible and spirituality or the metaphysical world was always intricately related to it there was no separation there it wasn't until probably 200 years or so ago when we started making the separatism in our way of thinking and reading reality so philosophy has been just like something else that we'll talk about has been pushed aside into a corner where we only see it as a funny way of looking at life and not truly the way we actually study life so in our ways we need to find a sort of philosophy and there are so many out there there's no one that works and that is the key thing this is why i also say and i'll reiterate this at the end that we need to find things that resonate with us because those things will create our own philosophy and once we start creating our own fabric of how we see things then we can share that and as we share it we enrich the whole collective consciousness by either sharing it vocally through text through images through music through poetry what have you it's just a way of sharing your view of the world and how it makes sense and when we get together collectively we can expand on that and we have been doing this for thousands of years so to me the, the law of one is a philosophy of life because it does explain all those things philosophy goes into details of taking every single thing and to me this is the most fascinating aspect of my life philosophy the way i see the world the way i connect the dots the way I create an image, a mental image of the things that I process and I think about. So philosophy really is at the core of everything. And the law of one is, in a way, a philosophy. So something to keep in mind. Then I say, the validation of this material goes from ancient traditions and beliefs to recent scientific findings, which in the end are the same thing. Energy centers, holographic systems, special temporal structures, archaeology, extraterrestrial life, systems of spiritual evolution. All those things have been validated or have a parallel somehow with uh, the law of one. All those things that we know in different aspects or uh, 
uh, I would say, departments of our study of this life and all the information that is available out there. More importantly, I think, is to know that the Law of One back in 1981, the raw material, uh, created these concepts of, say, uh, temporal structures of uh, space-time and also the holographic nature of this reality probably stays at the foundation of the things that the raw material uh, explained that physics had not discovered yet or at least had not uh, laid the foundations for it in a way that would be validated so to speak by the scientific community and this is something that it's amazing to read and it's amazing to just know that it was part of this gift that was given then and um, everything else of course seems to resonate with the way we see things but i'll add something else in a little bit that i think is more important than validating things with the outside experiments and so on because none of that actually matters when we do it the way i'll talk about it in a second so let's go to the next part where i say no more than ever it's important to understand or now more than ever, it's important to understand the law of one. Not through this material exclusively, but in the essence that can be found in any important belief system. But most importantly, right here, in the hearts. So, validating all this stuff through the papers that we see and the holographic nature of this reality, because the photon is a Merkaba. Uh, in a way that vibrates and that creates the holographic of the Plato, um, uh, the platonic solids and so on. That's great. That is always refreshing to find. But to really, really resonate with the material yourself and to see and read it and say, well, I may not know about this and that, but that actually makes sense to me. That actually, I would love to see the universe this way. We have a disconnection with what we would love to see in the world and what's actually happening. You can see this with people all the time. I mean, the law of one is centered on unity, the law of one. We are all one. And this is something you can ask anybody in the street and probably 90% or so would say, yes, I agree, we are all one. From their hearts, they know it. And there's always a stumbling but. But have you seen the world? But have you seen our history? But we're destined to be separate. There's always a but. And we always do that because from the heart, we know that is true. From the mind, and we'll get to that, we doubt it. And that is a problem. So it's, um, it's very important now to start understanding the law of one is asking us to open this to keep working on this. And I'll keep touching on this because I think this is the most important part of the whole video for me and explaining what the law of one is. But again, let me go to the next couple of slides that I have. And I say, maybe this is the most important message for me here. And it's that there are two ways to act in this reality, mind or heart. The mind thinks and projects consequences, which makes us doubt from doubt or fear, whereas the heart just knows. So, doubt is actually fear in the old English, I believe, if I, if I did my research right. So we know that to, uh, to think or doubt is what the mind does. The mind just sees things in a dual aspect. And this is a very helpful thing in uh, moving in this reality. We want to do that. We want to have a system in which you just act instinctively. You know, and the brain is the most important feature in our body to do this, or creating the mind in this case. But the thing is that this, there's two ways that we can see reality, especially now when we sit down and think about life and project our own reality. We are either doing it here or here and we need to move down here so we can start intuitively seeing what the world is. There's only one way to see the world and it's through this eye of the heart. So that is really important. And again, I cannot emphasize this enough that 
moving into the heart to actually see the world as it is is the most important thing because when we're up here connected to the matrix that we have which is pretty much um tainted and has been manipulated it's even harder for us to make sense of this reality but once you move down here there's no way to trick this guy this guy knows it all so that is to me a key point when understanding the law of one no matter how you see it next i say our society and formation has been based on the mind logical thinking and the intuitive side of the heart has been abandoned or dismissed once again i just keep uh talking about the same thing this society rewards logical thinking it rewards those things that make you see think black or white and it makes you go through a ladder of education professions and incentives that only again reward the mind not the heart this is why all those things that come from the heart our expression of self especially art has not been rewarded ever and is dismissed completely because it is deemed useless it is deemed unnecessary for the advancement of civilization so we as individuals need to make our choice and start thinking if we want to keep contributing to the world as a society that rewards the mind or as a society that rewards the heart telling the mind what to do i cannot make that choice for you but i can tell you that in many ways all our higher entities have been saying move to the heart two thousand years ago a guy was killed for saying that so let's move on the law of one reinforces the idea that we need to open the heart more because the next density of consciousness in which we are already vibrating at is based on the fourth energy center the green ray the heart chakra this is the inevitable part while we can live a life in any way we want and that is completely acceptable if we do make that connection that i talked about at the beginning of the video with the spiritual with our spirits then we can start making sense that our purpose here is only to advance in that essence that we are in that soul stream that we generate with every experience and what does that mean that we are nearing that point where in the law of one and this is something that you would need to follow in the raw material to understand what it is this transition into four density we are now in four density vibrations which actually means just loving vibrations this is the ether that is out there and that we're feeding our soul with so we have to start resonating with that vibration with that frequency for us to start getting more into that uh, density of consciousness it doesn't matter if we do it alive or dead but we're going to be in a four density planet very soon and we need to be accustomed to that the only way to do that is right here at the heart chakra and we'll talk about that in just one center actually not one center i just said it <laughs> let's move on to the last couple of slides that i have i say i never read about extraterrestrials much less about channelings that's funny but somehow the raw material resonated with me like nothing ever has this is true this is just a per personal anecdote and i'll just slide myself into the story or the line of thinking that i have here and it's true i was a scientific uh mind person for decades and it wasn't until i had my spiritual awakening that long story short led me to the law of one to start understanding this reality as i desperately asked for because i couldn't make sense of everything that was coming my way it's very confusing and like i said i wasn't even uh i didn't believe in extraterrestrials when i started reading the law of one and i remember the first time i grabbed my uh my first book and i said this is nonsense how can this explain reality it's an extraterrestrial source but once i start reading it 
it was in the preface because it was a long introduction uh, in the first book of the law of one but it wasn't until i started reading the first session that things started to click and it seemed to me that i already had not read the book but i had i knew these words somehow i knew what this all meant not that i was um illuminated by it it was almost like reading something that i had already studied in a different way and that resonance got to me so so big that everything started making sense all the things that i didn't understand before started clicking and this is why i started creating this series that i do now and it's um it's my dedication i completely abandoned any other project that i had to make this my prior my priority and my focus of life uh, so it was something that to me this is just again just a personal anecdote to uh, to mention here and lastly i have the last thing that i always say my interpretation is not final not only is it a subjective point of view but it also keeps expanding and changes as I reread it and learn more over time. This is me saying the same thing over and over again. Don't take my words for granted. Don't take my facts, because they're not facts. They're just my way to see the world, my philosophy of life. And uh, not only is it my subjective way of reading the material and expressing what it means to me, but it also changes over time. And as I learn more and reread other things, then they may change, not the core of what I mean and what I say, but certain aspects of it. So I always encourage people to make, please, your own conclusions about what this all means and share them. I keep learning from all of you guys. And that's just uh, probably the main reason I'm doing this, because not only do I wanna leave my interpretation out there, but also I wanna keep feeding from the great knowledge that you guys have and can actually uh, exchange with me. So the last thing I'll say here, and I think I can sum up this whole law of one and everything else that I can say that is important in the practical sense of how once this video finishes, and you may take a second or a minute or an hour to meditate on this, is to contemplate on this idea the whole purpose of this is to start accepting yourself more because only then can you start accepting other people more. And to me, that's unconditional love. I'll see you in the next video.